Hey KW community, thank you for joining us. Today we are going to be making Osso Buco with Vincenzo Velletri. Uh, you can watch this on YouTube and you can also watch it on Facebook. Don't forget to check out all the other delicious recipes we've been making with Vincenzo. We've been doing pasta, gnocchi, and we also have been doing some Italian desserts. Check those out and many other delicious recipes. But for today, you'll be watching him make Osso Buco. So let's welcome Vincenzo. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. All right, so what we're going to do today, we're going to make one of the most uh, famous Italian dishes, the Osso Buco. So first of all, you need to go and have a look at your uh, butcher, have uh, the Osso Buco. Osso Buco is a part of the shank, which is sliced in, uh, in uh, a crossway. And uh, also, what, what the important thing when you go and buy the Osobuco is that it actually has got the marrow in the middle of it. So make sure that your Osobuco has got the marrow. Um, the, first thing, the first thing that we need to do in this case is to score our Osobuco. Put my fry pan on. with a bit of uh, olive oil. So we're going to put some olive oil in our fry pan. So what we do, we get our sabuco and we're going to score on the side because we want to prevent for curling later on on the cooking process. Okay, probably better if I go on the, on the bench. Just a little score where these uh, seniors are. And then we're going to lightly flavor it, flour it. So. So what kind of meat are you using for the Osso Buco? Uh, this is a, a veal, veal shank, which has been sliced. Uh, on a horizontal way. So we lightly flavor it, make sure you take most of the flour away and uh, hopefully our pan is ready and we're going to sear inside of the pan. Now the best oh, you can use a different variety of pans for doing this. Um, probably because it's a, it's a casserole dish, um, you need a pan which is nice and thick and also holds the heat in a better way. So this one is quite good. Also, we could use something like this, which is uh, done in cast iron. Because cast iron, it gets the heat uniformly going around it. So, yeah, so what we're going to do now, we just seal this one up. And then we're going to take them away from, uh, from the pot. We're adding some onions and some butter. We're slightly going to fry the onions. And then we put the osobuco back into it. You me too. Yeah. All right. So as you can see, this one is curling up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slice a little bit more to so make sure it stays all down. So Vincenzo, whereabouts is this dish from? Is it from a particular region in Italy? Uh, it's, uh, it depends, depends how it, the condiments are done. Typical, the one that we're going to do today, it comes from north of Italy. Uh, it's usually served on a risotto la milanese, which is a typical rice from Milan, uh, made with the saffron. Uh, but you also can have the, 
the version made with the tomato, which is more southern way of, uh, of Italy. More or less is used anyway. The difference is on what sort of uh, um, sauce or condiments they use for it. And this is a beautiful uh, winter dish. Um, obviously with these pans, we're coming into winter, it's great to um, do some casseroles and things like that. What other kind of wintry dishes do you make in Italy? Well, most of the time we use quite a, quite a bit of pork, um, pork dish, um, so sausages, beans, and stuff like that mixed together. As, uh, and also we make what we call the spezzatino, which is a, more or less a sort of a casserole made with the beef most of the time or with the lamb. Um, yeah, and but winter time we use a lot of beans. A lot of uh, different um, uh, variety of beans. So you can see this one is getting nice, nice brown color on it. So what we do, we take it off from the pan, and we adding our onions, which I chopped before. And that's just a brown onion? Like yeah, that's a nice brown onion, and a bit of butter. And uh, the thing with this one is uh, that you go, you cook very gentle, even the onions, you know, making them to go um, burnt. So, I'm reducing down the heat, although it's sometimes it's very hard with uh, an induction to work on your heat. So those who are joining us on uh, Facebook and YouTube, let us know where you're um, watching from. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you're cooking. Uh, and what you'd love to see Vincenzo cook for us next. And we'll uh, ask any questions, we will um, answer them at the end. Okay, so as our onions are nice and translucent, we're going to put our meat back in there. Or any juice that's left in uh, your plate, just put back in there because that's nice flavor going to it. Now I'm going to put this one up a little bit. So the next step is to add our white wine. Just making sure that any wine you use has to be good for drinking before it be good for cooking. So if you can drink it, you can cook it. So what, what kind of um, wine would you traditionally use? Is there any that you wouldn't use? You wouldn't use a sweet wine? No, no. always a nice dry, dry wine. So. Like Italian wines? I do. I do. I do like Italians the same as I like the Australian one. They are completely different the way. They are completely different in terms of uh, um, flavor, apart from the flavor, but also about the, um, the strength. Italian wine is much lighter than what we got uh, as an Australian wine. Um, and that's because of the climb, because of the method of uh, uh, doing uh, the wine. And Sorry. Could you use a red wine or you always use a white wine? It, it will change the, the flavor. Um, if you're using the red wine, uh, it will come stronger because all the all the the, the wine, the flavor of the wine will stay there. So uh, if I do with the tomato base, probably I will use the red wine. But if I do like this one you know, on, the, on the white sauce, I would probably prefer to use the white wine. Okay, so we put that one on very low now. And let the, the wine to evaporate first. Um, you need the wine to evaporate, you need to have the alcohol going out of the wine, otherwise it will make your dish bitter. So you really need to have uh, that one reduced before you can add your stock to it.
So if, any, if anyone was wondering about the spelling of Oso Buco, I originally uh, sent an email to Vincenzo and he uh, promptly corrected me on my spelling. I think us Australians spell it O-S-S-O-B-U-C-C-O, -S 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 -O, but the correct one is... Is uh, with uh, A-S-O, or A-S-S-O-B-U. Yeah, O S O. Yeah, uh, B U C O. Only one C, no double C. Was it a book or not a book? But you know, it's understandable because uh, um, we probably make the same mistake when we speak in English. Or we have English, pigeon Italian English. All right, so when your uh, wine is completely evaporated, you start to add some stock and that stock could be depends again what you like to if you want nice strong flavor you can use some uh, beef stock like this one or if you want a more sort of a light flavor you can use some vegetable stock okay so we got our stock there now we cover this one up and we let to cook for, for one, one and a half hour, depends how thick your smoker is. Um, so in doing that, I of course uh, prepared one before because I won't be uh, sitting for one and a half hour until that one is cooked, um, which we're going to serve for you. Now usually, the, as I said, this, the osobuco is served either on um, uh, on on uh, risotto la milanese on rice, or otherwise can be served on mashed potato. What I'm going to do today, I'm going to serve this one with mashed potato. I got here some potato going on the boiling, and in a minute I'm going to uh, put them to uh, the riser rather than the mesher because they're much more uh, fine. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to organize my um, uh, gomolada. So I got some beautiful lemon. I'm taking some of the zest out. And this piece of equipment, I tell you what, is unbelievable good to do this job. So what do you put in your gramolata? And also, I bet those lemons are from your tree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my gramolata, I will put, traditionally you put uh, parsley, garlic, and lemon zest. I had a little bit of rosemary because I think rosemary has got very nice flavor to be added to it. Uh, so that's the only variation that I'm allowed to do. So what I got here, you can see I got my parsley, got my garlic, and I got a bit of rosemary in there. I'm going to be chopped that one very gentle. all together. And the olive oil from your property as well? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah, we have been very good this year. We had a nice production. We haven't got a, a lot, but we made something as 480 liters of oil that we also going to be sell on our website uh, very, very soon. Just widening because the fresh oil coming straight from the, um, the crusher uh, Sometimes it can be very difficult to handle for people because it can be very sharp. Uh, and because we usually use uh, olives which are, uh, they tend to be towards the, the green because the olives rather than the black one, uh, less mature olives, they're, they're much more sharp, but uh, the quality of the oil is much better. And they of course produce a bit less, and that's why the, you will find around different price for different oil sometimes depends on the how they've been gold up. Well, there is something that you had at the end of the cooking process of the dish and you will add the gomolata and you will add your salt um, at the end of the cooking process. So tell me how long, the meat's obviously on and cooking now, how long does the Osso Buco cook in that, um, uh, in the pan for, in the casserole dish? 
It would be, depends on the, how thick is the osobuco when you get cut by the butcher. If it's a thin, like the one that we got there, probably one hour will be done. If it's a thicker, we we'll go from one to uh, one and a half hour. In a very low heat. Um, so yeah, that's the, it depends always on, the, on what sort of cut you have. And also, if it's a veal, if it's a beef, how old is the, <laughs> the cut? <laughs> Also, we were talking before in the workshop about pressure cookers and how you can half the time. Your wife cooks uh, also buco with a pressure cooker? Yes, there's, a, there's nothing wrong to using the pressure cooker and doing this sort of dish. It actually works in a very good way. Um, and uh, that will give you the opportunity to half the timing. When, so if you are in, a, in an hurry, you can put everything in there. You go to this stage, then you put your pressure cooker on closed in, live on the stove for half an hour and you got your meal done. So you would still brown it in the pan and, um, and do the stock, yeah. the onions in the pan? Yeah, it is, it is important to do that because that's uh, what the flavours and all the... Uh, also searing the meat, it means that you keep all the juice inside of the meat. Otherwise you're going to boil, even if it's in the pressure cooker, it's going to be boiled. Um, so yeah, definitely you need to stir it. Okay, so our granulata is ready. Now I've got my mashed pot ma my potato here. And um, you have been noticed that I always do my mashed potato starting with the potato which, with the skin on. I do believe there is a, a, better, a better way of doing it. It's hot. This is, and so what does the skin on um, keeps the flavour in? And you said it doesn't take much longer for them to cook, cook anyway? No, that's all right. It takes more or less the same time. But in the same, on the same time, it prevents too much water getting into your potato. So it's nice and um, it's got more flavour. It keeps the flavour in. Um, quite often use a potato ricer to make mash or is it just um, something? We actually use only the potato ricer to make our mash. Uh, I found the uh, mash for mashing potato only when I realised when I come here in Australia. Before them I, I never seen it. So yeah, because um, most of the time mashed potato is uh, something that uh, we don't use as much as the Australians would use, or the English, I would say, use it. Um, we use the potato, the mashed potato, to make our pasta or our gnocchi, in other words. Now, what foods are you... Do you miss any foods from Italy? Or what do you... When you go back to Italy, what do you um, go straight for? What do you crave? <laughs> I miss my mozzarella. mozzarella. That's the first thing. Anytime I go to Italy, my first stop is to, uh, because where I come from is one of the most um, uh, area where uh, the mozzarella is made, or the, the biggest area for making mozzarella. So my first stop is at the uh, cheese factory, have my kilo of mozzarella, eat it, and then go to see anybody else. And the other thing that uh, most probably I miss is the, uh, the wild mushrooms and the wild um, animals. We used to uh, eat a lot of the wild um, animals in a way, and uh, which we don't get much here. So as you can see, our mashed potato be Ready in a second with the riser. Look at that. It's nice and soft. So what I need to do on that one, just add a little bit of uh, butter. And if you want, you can add a little bit of cream. And we're ready to serve. salt or pepper or any other seasonings in your mashed potato? Definitely we need some salt 
you know, Italians can't live without salt. We, we built a road that goes from Rome to the other side of the Adriatic coast to get the salt. Yeah. That's it, that's plenty. It's rock salt. Yep, that's fine. Okay, so our mesh is ready. Clean up a little bit down here. So those of you who have joined us more recently, let us know where you're um, joining from, uh, whether you're in Australia or somewhere else. Um, we'd love to hear questions if you have any, and also what you've been cooking, uh, what your favourite winter dish is, um, whether it's a casserole or a soup, um, let us know, and we'd love to um, see what else Vincenzo can cook for us as well. Okay, so we got our osobuco, which was cooked cooked before. I'm just finishing to warm it up, adding the gremolata in it. So this is a here's one we've seen earlier. Um, you would, how long has our osobuco been this cooking? One has been cooking for an hour. An hour. Yeah. And you can see it's nice and tender and soft. So we're putting a bit of our gremolata in there. Okay, so we got our mashed potato going into our plates. So you mentioned um, traditionally you would serve this with a um, risotto milanese, is that right? Um, what, what is, what's the flavour in that one, in that risotto? Uh, risotto milanese is just a rice with, uh, which is cooked just with um, saffron. That's all ingredient. Risotto is something unique and usually is, is never overpowered, never, doesn't have too many flavours into it. Uh, tradition is made with only a single uh, ingredient or a couple of ingredients that are going together. Vincenzo, can you straighten up your tie a little bit so we can hear you a little bit better? It's gone off. Just your. See, I need Perfect, thank you. Beautiful, no worries. Sorry. Wouldn't want you looking scruffy neither, so now you're all neat and tidy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so our sabuco there is nice and warm. And you can see it's nice and soft. serving um, four people would you do eight smaller pieces is that how how and then you have your beautiful sauce and if you like you can add a little bit of more gremolata on the top just to finish the dish
Here we go. So tell us, tell us the name of it again, we, what you've cooked there. Talk the people through it, just a brief rundown. Uh, typical uh, Nord of Italy Osso Buco, served on a mashed potato. smells amazing in here. Um, thank you again for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Let us know what you'd like to cook and um, what you'd love Vincenzo to cook. Hopefully you've caught up on his other ones up till now on YouTube, uh, on our Kitchen Warehouse YouTube channel. So we'll speak to you soon and thanks again for joining us. See you later. Thanks Vincenzo. Thank you. See you later.